then the committee, who's uh, Dr. Zhang, Dr. Deepwood, and myself, will have the first opportunity to ask, ask all questions, and then after we're, we're through, then we open the floor to other questions. Pascal? Thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming today uh, to my politician defense. So my topic um, is exploring knowledge, beliefs, and uh, practices of radon gas among public health workers. Um, but before I go, I actually did this study. I'm interested in how I got interested in doing this study. I used to live in Emu Park, and that's in Bergen County, New Jersey, and the neighbor of my Suddenly, the lung, lung cancer. Uh, never smoked, and uh, nobody knew what was going on. So, it happened that that area in Emu Park was built in the 50s by uh, the Army Corps of Engineers. So, it didn't have a uh, basement. Everything was up, up uh, above ground. But some families decided to dig the basement just to add value to the house and to have more space uh, in the house. So they were one of those families, and it happened that why they dug the basement up and had good life for some years, that basement was actually killing them in the house. So they had radar. So what is radar? Um, radon is a radioactive, invisible, odorless, and um, you know, natural occurring gas, and it comes from the soil and rock. So the US EPA had have a radon action level, which is four picocuric per liter of air. But actually, there's no safe level of lead, uh, of radon. So even if you have three picocuric, you are, there's no safe level. You are still uh, you might still have come down with lung cancer. So concentrations of radon, uh, you have it in underground water, uh, building material, enter the, the, uh, the house. Like if you have a, a large kitchen with your slab, with your marble, you might have you might have introduced radon into your house without knowing it. So I put up this slide just to show you the properties of radon. Before I go ahead, this is the periodic table. And radon is right here at 86. If you look to your right, you have about six elements that are red. Those are called noble gases. So radon is part of it. It's 86. And my son, 10-year-old son, will say, why is it noble when it's causing a problem? Nobility. <laughs> so it's because, essentially, they stay by themselves, and those gases do not mix with each other. They can't form compounds of those noble gases with the rest over here. So they stay alone. So essentially there are 39 acetopes of radon, but the one that public health cares about is radon 222. Because it's most stable. And like I said, they come from the rock and the soil in the house. And um, the breakdown Radon comes from the breakdown of uranium, uh, which is 92 on the periodic table, and also and the breakdown into uh, polonium 218 and 214, which actually emits that the gas that we breathe, breathe in our lungs and then goes to our lungs to cause uh, lung cancer. And of course, like I said before, uh, radon forms from the rock, igneous rock, metamorphic rock, and sedimentary rock. So I want to show you something that nobody in this room have actually seen or heard about. Four picocuric per liter of air is the actual level. But for instance, if four family, a family of four is exposed to that for 15 minutes, just 15 minutes, case in point, in, our radio, in, in areas where we, in the United States, where you have uh, the um, radioactive waste sites, they allow you just 25 mRNAs for exposure. But if you stay in your house for 15 minutes with four picocuric, you're actually at 800 mRNA exposure. 
So if you go to the fence of a radioactive waste material site and stay for 15 minutes, remember that they check that fence, the uh, parameter around the fence, every, 25, every 15 minutes to see that it's 25 or less MREM. But in your house, you've been inhaling radon more than four picocuric or four picocuric per liter of air, and you are actually 35 times higher than being at the gate or around the perimeter of a radioactive waste. So this is a, a huge problem. And again, the US lifetime standards for carcinogens, you, some of you might know that, in the United States is one per 1,000 risk of death. But with radon, you have one in 100. So you actually 1,000 times the risk of death based on Yes. Now we have to ask, is there actually a cancer prevalence Closer. that is increased there? Okay? Yeah. It, it gets back to, you know, we can't just make this one-to-one -one relationship. There isn't. There's multi-factors that potentially could be leading into it. It might be a smaller population of individuals in those areas as opposed to the southern, so when you have greater, in, you know. So there's lots of things that come into play. And I think, you know, when I can hear you talk, your information really speaks to the fact that the training process needs to change. There has to be checks and balances. Because even though the people may have the knowledge, or even if they know it's their job, if they're not being checked on their job, we're seeing that the information is not being translated out. Yeah. So, so something else has to occur. Yeah. So I you're think absolutely you're right. right. Let me take it a little bit further. <laughs> I know the health officer of Sussex, Warren, uh, Somerset, and uh, Hunterdon. <sighs> two months ago, well, not two months, uh, sometime early this year, when everything started making sense about my study, I reached out to them, I said, during the meeting, I said, the one for War Warren have been there 20 years, Sussex just retired, and I said, what happened to your study, to this man? The first thing one of them told me, I believe that's for Hunter, and he said, we embraced this when with e e uh, DEP, but the rest of the of this state did not embrace it. So they went ahead to tell the public, please, they did a very good job. So that's why you have a lot of red here. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, basically, I'm mm -hmm. saying there's more tests. There's over more tests there. over there. Therefore, yeah. So they, this part of this. <laughs> we don't know that to be true. It's, it's, uh, but th this is what they're telling me that that's why. Case in point, Camden County have, every year do have the highest West Nile virus pool, pool of water in West Nile virus, the, the mosquito. Because we do a very terrific job going out there to the public to test for pools. Guess what? The other 20 counties think it's not a big problem. So they don't do that. So but we do, and that's why our numbers are so high in Candem County compared to the rest of the state. Because we do a marvelous job there going every day to test for the for test for pools. And it just doesn't go I mean I, I when I think of this, you know, these have the little maps showing it. Um, I live on a, on a, in a in a town where we have one of the three super fun sites. In the Tom's state. River? Well, no, I'm in South Plainfield. So okay, South Plainfield. I have South Plainfield one. We have the largest, and Tom's River has the second one. Yes. But yeah, so South Plainfield has the largest in the uh, small population. Yeah. And these super funds, you know, are, are problematic. Do we have tons of information about them as residents? No. Because the DEP comes in, cleared it out, but the next town over, they're not colored in that because it's a different town. But it depends because I can tell you that I live in a super fun neighborhood. Okay, that's um, way, way, yeah, Wayne, Thornton. Yeah. Okay, Thornton yeah. Hill. And I can tell you that depending on what is initially told, 
we had we had no choice. We had a building that was by um, by W R Grace Company, and that's where the chlorine came from because they dumped there. And this is little lab samples dumped into the ground and into our water supply because we have underground yeah, springs. And so we all knew that it was there. We all kind of knew the building was there. We kind of suspected, and we were the ones that had to start from. The, the neighborhood, and I can remember being 12 years old and being in high school already and studying this stuff. What do you think that was related to? Essentially, they are not well informed about, they don't think they have anything to offer regarding radon, radon exposure, not radon exposure in the public. So, putting it in another way. Public <laughs> so, um, I found that the result was 0 0.01. And we did it in school. We started talking about it. Our parents started talking about it. And we brought it all the way up to Senator Pascrell. So it came from the down up. And our, yes. and our health department got involved. And now we're one of the cleanest states around in Florida. But it took 15 years. And we had all the you know, soil dug up and moved out to Utah and all that other stuff. But it was a huge <laughs> motion. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't like Utah, OK? That's where they sent it. No, they have a place to process it. They have a place to process it. But anyway, we, I can remember doing that for, for probably a better part of a decade, trying to get the involvement from the towns and try to get the health department involved. And then they got involved because the high schoolers made a big deal of it. And they came out and started talking to us. And then they started doing research. And then it became town hall meetings. And so it, there's a bit of a grassroots thing going both ways. But that would also lead me to a question about you. Because I had conversations with you on this all the way back to philosophy of science. Sure. Yes. yes. I was okay. the so, staff member. So building on what Dr. Cahill said and what Dr. Zip said, I'm going to nail you to the wall now. Sure. Go ahead. And the lawyer's going to nail you. You are in a situation where you have people in First, the direct uh, this kind of uh, program, but we're doing it right now. You have the opportunity for advocacy. Yes, I do. And uh, we've been working with that. Uh, as of now, I'm the president of New Jersey Environmental Health Association, uh, president-elect of New Jersey Public Health Association. <laughs> I'm on the board of so many uh, New Jersey uh, health-related uh, health programs. It's my uh, privilege to introduce the, uh, the newest doctor to the scholarly community. Uh, Pascal, you uh, passed your, your defense. Congratulations. Um, let me just offer you know, a couple of comments. Uh, there's, there's no doubt that, that you're a, a successful executive. Uh, you know, you've, uh, I've known you for several years now. I actually you know, knew about you in East Orange you know, before you moved down to Camden. You know, our, our task here, our objective here, was really to, to help you turn that corner in the sense of, of developing your scholarly uh, skills and your abilities to, to, to you know, collect evidence and then, and then speak, speak in a way that, that's, that's more solidly based. And, and so my question you know, to you was, was exactly in that direction. And you know, you, you know, I think you, you've come a long way. And uh, you, you passed me a long time ago with your statistical uh, Knowledge base, uh, so uh, that's not hard to do. But I uh, do congratulate you. Um, you know, yes, there's been uh, uh, times when uh, uh, you know we've had conflicts, and that's just part of the journey. And then part of the part of the the way we develop new knowledge is through through debate and through through critique. And so some of the conversation we've had in this in this very room. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's a continual learning. And so one of your comments that that you know you, as you transition from when you, you started your, your study to what you have now and you've learned so much, um, you know, often the comment at this point is, I know, I know now much more what I don't know as much as what I do know. And so um, you know, your journey you know, doesn't end here. It, it continues and you know, expect great things that, that you'll be a very successful uh, scholarly practitioner. So Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I want to say something. I wanted to, to thank you for your service in public health. And I was reminded of the reason why we went into public health in the first place. And it, it's not only about helping people and communities be healthier, but it's about social justice. And you remember that 
always because you're always talking about how this can lead to bigger change. And I appreciate you as a change agent, and I look forward to seeing how you change everything in the county of New Jersey and in the world regarding this issue. So thank you so much for asking the difficult questions. Pascal, and uh, you said uh, the smile is uh, contagious. <laughs> <laughs> it always is. You know, every time I meet with him, he always smiles. You know, every time he show up in front of my office or even come into the office, he smile. You know, that kind of smile made me feel like, you know, this is a good place I work at. <laughs> this is a good student I'm talking to. And, you know, after he left, you know, that smile lasted for another few hours. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess your wife feels the same way. <laughs> and, uh, um, I like Pascal because um, you know he, he he believes in something. You know I can tell from his attitude, from um, from the way he handles uh, the questions. You know sometimes the questions was difficult. He never he never was freed of the difficulty. From his eyes you can tell he can get things done. Next time we meet with him. You know, at the first beginning, I didn't believe in that. But after twice, three times, I started believing in that. So um, your uh, kind of hardworking and, uh, and uh, your belief really made a difference. Thank you. And now, I have no doubt, you will be a successful public health worker, a successful public health executive, and a successful husband. <laughs> you know, even in a difficult situation, you always come back and revisit and come up with a solution, and you always do the right thing. That's where my belief in you come from. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the last thing, Pascal, uh, you know, on behalf of all of our faculty and our student learning community, I'd like to present you with just a couple small, small tokens of, to mem memorialize this moment. One is, is we talk about this as a journey, as I, as I just said, and, and the, the student becomes the teacher, and I think what Dr. Zhang just commented on, and, and Dr. Diamundo referred to as well, is, is you, you truly are a teacher, or a preacher. Uh, and uh, journeys are, are often uh, uh, sort of noted in regards to time, and so the first uh, symbol is a clock from Seton Hall University, so you can have that on your desk and remember us and uh, you know, stay in touch with us. Uh, as part of uh, you know, who you've become as a result of being with us. The second thing is that, that we join the conversation. We talk about, about this is not uh, just an exercise, but this is producing new knowledge that will expand uh, and help others to understand the topic that you've explored in more and more detail. And the way we join the conversation is often through writing. And so here's your pen to start writing and uh, uh, you know, continue uh, to uh, make a difference in, in the world. So again, Pascal, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A few things. Okay. Um, from yesterday till today, um, uh, my wife is here. We've been married. It will be 24 years this um, December for, uh, 18th. And as a matter of fact, um, um, my brother, immediate elder brother, is here. Um, I come from a family, we are seven, I'm the seven of seven, I'm the baby. And uh, all of us have at least a master's degree. Uh, two of us, as of today, have a doctorate degree. And um, uh, one is a physician, one is an accountant, one is an economist. And, uh, but um, it's been a tough life. But uh, I thank God for all his blessings. So thank my wife. My brother is here. And um, my very good friend, uh, recall I told him my brother passed away a couple of years ago. Um, he had his PhD from NYU. And uh, he was a Obakini University. And that's his best friend today. Take a picture. So, um, but, I wish that he's here today. So. That's 
Gallantry is very I thank you all um, for putting up with me. Um, like I said, I'm kind of a difficult person. Yeah, nah. Please join us. Uh,